residuals, 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 residuals. We've got a thing going on. And yes, there's a lot that goes on with these, with this least square regression line, with these residual lines. So I need you to go to your locker and download the worksheet. Actually, I you can check your locker, but I also put it on your calendar. Calendar is probably going to be easier to find. Download all three of them because you're going to need it. Hey, welcome back. Okay, so now go ahead and read the scenario and let's get started. Now, one of the things that I believe that I put on your calendar was the, um, the template that you might want to use um, or you may not for the different um, things. Okay, but as we start off here, first of all, what is the um, equation for the regression line? Okay, so let's look at our computer output. And as we look at our computer output, like I've told you before, here, this is your slope and there is your y-intercept. Because the whole scenario, what it is about is that they're looking at your test scores versus the row number that you're in. So your row number is supposed to predict your test score. So it stands to reason that the slope is going to be the coefficient of the rows, which is right here. And here's your y-intercept. We're not dealing with this at all. And I believe the thing that I gave, what I gave you in terms of your output, I put down here your r squared and your s. So if yours looks a little different than mine, yeah, I noticed that as I was doing it, and I wasn't going to go back and recopy this. So based on what I just said, please notice right here, here's your equation of the line. And don't forget that you have to define each variable. Remember, you have to have a y hat, and y hat is the predicted test scores. And x is your row number. Next thing we want to do is find and interpret the slope. So you can use that rubric if you want. And what I decided here, first of all, let's just name the slope. And let me bag out of this for a minute. Okay, so this is better. So as I find and interpret the slope, so remember the slope is right here. So the interpretation for each additional row, okay, which is your um, input, and I put from the front of the classroom, um, you, um, um, we can predict that the test scores will decrease by that 1.117 points. I also wrote another one that you might like, and then I'm going to um, show you what the book said, another interpretation. So as you get closer to the front row, um, to the front of the room based on the front row, your test score is predicted to decrease by 1.1171 points. And I honestly, I like this one better than this. The one in the green, I was trying to follow that rubric, which tells you that that little template I should say I made um, it works sometimes nicely sometimes not so much okay next let's look at the y-intercept so the y-intercept again you can use that template or here I just said I stated what the y-intercept is remember from your um, output is right here if you're in um, row 0, your test score will be 85.7%. So, and I need to put down here, that's not reasonable. What the heck is a row 0? Okay. Um, I know some of you guys are thinking, well, what about if we say the initial row? Well, I thought about that one too, and as I look at this right here, if this was the initial year, meaning if it was data collected and the first year was collected like was in 20, um, 2010, then you can refer to that as zero because that's the initial time. But when it comes to rows, they do have numerical basis. So for that reason, sticking to this here, we're talking about the zero row, then it's going to be approximately 85. But I had to think about that myself. 
If you have additional questions on this one, mark it so you can ask me when you see me um, on Wednesday. Now let's move on. Your correlation coefficient, which is your value of R. Okay, so you had R squared, which I had to give you, which was 4.7%. You know you're going to have to change it to a decimal. Yours is down there somewhere. At least I think I sent you the better copy. So in order to find R, you've got to take the square root of that 4.7%. So you found R, the correlation coefficient, to be 21.67%. Okay, so there is a weak negative, possibly linear association between the, the row you sit in and your test score. And the reason I said possibly linear is that thing is so scattered, I can't tell what's happening right there on that um, um, scatter plot. And with that R squared being so low and things being scattered to that extent, yeah, that's why I said possibly linear. Okay, next, we are going to find and interpret the coefficient of determination. Remember, the coefficient of determination is your R squared that was given to you. So, it means about 47% of the variation in the test scores is explained by that least square regression line, given the number, given the row a student sits in. So, in other words, you cannot say, um, you can say about 47% of the variation is, um, you could say 4.7% um, of the, um, I can't come up with another word for variation, we can discuss that, um, but this is what they like on the AP test. You cannot say 47% of the points lie on that line. You cannot say that. So you're saying that of the data points that you have, approximately 4.7% are explained or are acceptable, I should say, based on that line. Um, and yes, there's the variability on it. So again, we're not saying that, oh, the line goes through 4.7%. No, no, no. We're saying that line explains only about 4.7% of the data. And here's the rest of it in context. So again, the variation of your output is explained given the input. Okay, next, find and interpret the standard deviation of the residual. Okay, so here, remember, the residual is the T that sits on its side, and that information was given to you. So when given the least square regression line with X as the row in which the student is seated and Y is the student's test score, we will be typically, that should be a T, um, typically off by 10.0. Six seven points. Okay, so remember what this is saying again. We've got our residual right here, which, like I said, is this is letter T, a drunk T, and we're saying that these residuals are going to be off, typically by ten point um, zero six points. And remember, here's your residual. This is a residual from the predicted to the actual from the predicted to the actual, from the predicted to the actual. And if you don't like the, um, the actual, from the predicted to the observed, from the predicted to the observed, from the predicted to the observed. Remember, observed and actual is the same thing. It's the, the data that was collected, the true data. Now let's look at number seven. Determine if the linear model is appropriate for this data and explain. Well, the residual plot is scattered and therefore a linear model is appropriate. Um, depends on how long you've been in math, this represents therefore. And here I should have the word plot. And I put but, we got a really low R squared. Remember, that, ex that is, we're saying 4.7% of the data um, of your um, test scores are explained by that line. So yeah, a linear model is appropriate, but I would not use this one to make a prediction off of. I wouldn't. Which takes me to the next one. I'm going to sit there and contradict exactly what I just said because now I'm going to say find the residual um, in row 3, a person that scored 80. 
So I'm about to sit here and do exactly what I said I wouldn't do. And I'll be honest with you, if it was this poor in real life, you would not use this statistical information at all. So let's go back. We need to find row 3, um, the score of 80. we got to um, find the predicted value. Let's slide up. So here is your raw data. I know mine is clearer than yours. Sorry, I took a picture, and you guys, that's what the book looked like when you got it. Okay, but here is that little dot that I'm putting right there. The small dot is what our prediction value is going to be. And the green dot that you can see there, or the big glob, is going to be the, um, is your actual information. So the first thing I did was I had to find the predicted score. And you just take it and you plug it into the equation. Now, I plug this into the equation as 80. And when you plug it into 80, find out what you get. I did it a couple of times, and I got a negative 3 point something, which makes no sense. So then I had to plug it in as 0.80. Now your thoughts are, well, Ms. Yarbrough, how would I know to do that? That happens sometimes when it comes to regression output. You're not exactly sure what they put in to get the different values. And then when I put in 0.8, I got that 84.8. And then when I look at it, that's pretty reasonable. That is very reasonable with this line. And that's how you make a determination. If you do it and the numbers just don't make sense, then your thoughts are you're going to have to, since these are test scores, that was reasonable to change the point 0.8. Okay? Other situations we're going to um, talk about in class, like if it's something based on a year, are you going to put in the year 2015 if you're going to make a prediction, or are you going to put in the year 15 because maybe the information started from, um, 20, um, from the year 2000? So how do you make that determination again? Just plug in the 80 and see what you get. Just the regular 80, not 0.8. That number made no sense as you look at your raw data, okay, on your graph. But then you plug in, this, plug in the 0.8 because that's reasonable since we're talking about test scores. That's what I got, and it matches, okay? And then after I found the, um, the um, predicted, the actual was what was given to me right here. I take it and plug it in. And it says that your residual is a negative um, 4.812. Now let's see, does that match what we have about here? It matches what we have here. And yes, it matches right here. Okay, so yes, it is reasonable. And it's negative because it's under the residual line. As we look at this on the residual plot, as we look at the scatter plot, it's negative because it was over predicted, meaning your prediction line was over that um, actual point. So as I interpret that, the actual score of 80 was about 4.812 points less than the predicted score of, um, and then I have the 84.12. Okay, so me and my regression lines, we got a thing going on okay hasta la vista guys about to make the second video have a good one bye bye